Did, did you guys have a game that first year where you, you came in afterwards and you were like, oh, yeah, this this kind of flipped? I think um, the game for us was actually Clippers at the Clippers. And it's the game that Steph dropped CP on the baseline where he went double behind the back, CP fell, and he hit the jumper. That year, we had started off maybe 8-1 and one or 7-1, and one, and we were going into the Clippers, and that was, as JJ know, that was a huge test for us And because the Clippers were the next team up. Like, they were the next team up out of the West to take things over. And for us, we're like, yo, we – we're seven and one. We're eight and one. Like we can go in and win this game, and we already kind of had the thing brewing between us. They had just beat us uh, the year before in, in the in game seven, and so the thing was kind of brewing. And it's like this is a big game, and that game right there was the one where it was like, oh yeah, this is serious. Like we got a chance to be really good, and it was winning that game in the way that we won it. I sat that game actually. We were down twenty at halftime. And we came back and won that game. I think for us, that was the game where you knew we got a chance to be really good and things were flipping for us. We beat you guys on Christmas Day the next game. After that win on Christmas Day, this was Christmas 2014, so 14-15 season. I think you won the next 10 games with us before CP left and I left. Um, We couldn't beat you guys after that. I'm curious if... At any point in time, like when did you, there, there was a level of respect, of course, but after we beat you guys in the playoffs, when did you kind of feel like we were the little brother in a way? Do you know what I mean by that? Because we, we got to the point where it became sort of mental with us mm-hmm. almost. I, mean, I remember, I remember uh, a game uh, we were playing, I think it was the, the following season. We started off four and one, five and one, something like that. Played you guys in Golden State. And we were up nine in the fourth. Josh Smith missed a dunk. I threw him a pocket pass because you guys hedged out on the screen. And he missed – he tried to bang on somebody and he missed the dunk. And then, you know, from that point on, he just guys blitzed us. And I want to say that was as close as we got <laughs> after that. Like, it was just – it was to the point where we had some sort of mental block against you guys. But I'm wondering when that shifted for you guys in that run. Uh, I think for us it, it kind of shifted in 2015 um, where we like – yeah, yo, these guys can't beat us. And I'll be 100% honest with you. For us, it was like, yo, these guys are front runners. That's what we used to say to each other. Like, these guys are front runners. They have a couple guys on their team, you being one of them, that are steady. That no matter what, those guys are going to give you what they give you. But everyone else is front runners. This whole Clipper thing is front runners. And that, and that was how we felt. And once we got to the point of where we felt that, that's when it kind of changed because it was like, hey, if we just go punch them in the mouth, they front runners, they'll fold. Even once we're down 20 at halftime, it's like, yo, they're front runners. If we punch them, they will fold. And so I think that's when it kind of started to switch for us. It's, it's like 2015. We just thought like, oh, it's, it's good for them when it's going good, but when it's going bad, we don't feel like they stick together when it's going bad. And so it was more so from a standpoint of like how guys were reacting to each other, like how how Blake would react to CP when he didn't get the ball, you know, and just different stuff like that that would go on when you're in the game. It's the game within the game. And so for me, I'm always paying attention to that stuff, like because I need to pray on it. I need to go in Because you're a psycho. Ear. It's basically <laughs> Absolutely. what Absolutely. I need to go in Blake Air like, damn, CP don't pass the ball, huh? CP only going to pass it if, if he can get the assist, huh? He ain't going to give it to you. And you just play little mind games like that. And that's when I kind of knew, like, or we knew, like, yeah, these guys can't beat us. So 15, I think we had a, we had a shot. I'm not – because you guys hadn't won yet. We would have faced you – in the conference finals, we, we had a, an amazing meltdown against the Houston Rockets. Uh, 16, you guys are 73 and 9. There was about an hour in the playoffs where uh, Steph, I think, sprained his knee and was going to be out probably for the first couple games around two. We were up uh, 2-1 on the Blazers' second half within like 10 minutes of each other. CP broke his hand. Blake tore his quad tendon, and really that our window was shut 
because then the next summer you guys got Kevin. We weren't as good as you. I mean, there, there was no chance at that point of, of us beating you guys. Um, I actually want to go back, though, to the to the Donald Sterling, Donald Sterling series because, look, there's been a Quibi documentary told from our perspective. You've played in five finals. I played in one. That, from game four on of that series, I, I don't remember there being that amount of media people on the sidelines pregame, that amount of media attention on us. Like that was, it was a circus. Mm -hmm. What was it? What was the, what was going on in your locker room? <clears throat> in our locker room, um, as, as one of the young guys who had no input, I'm just sitting around listening and, uh, and just kind of listening to David Lee uh, and really Steph talking back and forth. So I think Steph was in communication with CP from y'all locker room and, and, and Andre because they were all talking through the um, Players Association. Andre and Steph are talking to CP. And, and I know you remember at that time, like two hours before the game, we weren't sure if we were going to play. Like guys were still talking about, yo, I mean, I remember hearing we're going to go to half court, shake each other's hand, and walk off the court. I remember, yep. Jump ball, mm -hmm. opening tip, everybody walks out. Walk that off the court. Yeah. I remember, um, like, yeah, we're going to play, and everybody flipped it. Like, there were so many different conversations going on, and ultimately we went, went through and played the game because what I recall was Andre telling us, all right, we got it determined. We're about to watch what Adam says, what his ruling is going to be, and if it's not strong enough, we're not playing. And then once Adam said uh, he is banned from the league, he's forced to sell, they were like, well, we kind of got to play now. Like he he just pretty much put kicked the guy out. We got to play. And so I remember all of those talks, but as second year in the league, uh, coming off the bench and not getting much playing time, I had no say-so in anything. I'm just kind of sitting there listening like, oh, we're not going to play? Well, this is my chance to be part of history. We can walk off the court. I'll be a part of history. 